Wendy Jennings has type 2 diabetes, also known as adult onset diabetes, and has been taking part in trials conducted by the University of Bristol into the importance of exercise in dealing with the problems of diabetes. Well, you just feel feel better altogether. I, I, in my opinion, you know, my what I feel about it, I find it makes going to the gym makes me feel. I don't feel wonderful when I'm doing it, but when I've done it and come home, you think, yeah, that did do me good, and I do find I can get on and do things more than what I did. Modern society's increasingly inactive lifestyle means that type 2 diabetes is one of the fastest growing chronic illnesses affecting the developed world, and the problem is getting significantly worse. The type of diabetes we're looking at is type 2 diabetes, which is the diabetes which is related to activity and uh, excess weight. And yes, that is going up hugely. We expect that from the year 2000 to the year 2010, that the number of people with type 2 diabetes is going to double. And by the year 2020, it's going to go up three times. So we're seeing a huge escalation in this. People with diabetes are more likely to have heart attacks. They're more likely to go blind. In fact, it's the leading cause of blindness in, the, in, in this country at the moment. And they're likely to go on to get renal failure. So really, diabetes has, can have huge implications. Scientists are increasingly convinced that a lack of physical activity, especially in children, is the root cause of weight-related illnesses, the rise of the couch potato. Professor Neil Armstrong, director at the Children's Health and Exercise Research Centre at the University of Exeter, produced the original report that issued the first couch potato warnings. That was in 1990, and there's little to suggest that much has changed since then. Not a great deal has been done, and 10, 12 years later, what have we got? We've got about 20% of children overweight, perhaps 10% obese, and the epidemic of obesity, which you know, could have been predicted from the data that we published at that time. That epidemic of obesity is now global, affecting more people worldwide than malnutrition. Good. United States surveys show that between 1980 and 1994, obesity trebled in American adolescents and doubled in children. And children who start life obese are, statistically, more likely to become obese adults, falling victim to a range of diseases, including diabetes. Type 2 diabetes, which used to be referred to as adult onset diabetes, is now being demonstrated in children in the UK. And this is a problem that will get worse if children get fatter because of the relationship between obesity and the, the, the onset of type 2 diabetes. I can't stress enough and on things just how important it is to try and encourage children to be more active, but to take activity on board as part of their lifestyles so in a way that we hope will be sustained through childhood, through adolescence, and then into adult life. Over the last 15 years, scientists at the University of Exeter have studied activity levels in over a thousand children. Almost half of adolescent girls and a third of the boys didn't even take 10 minutes of sustained exercise in three days of monitoring. Boys are generally more active than girls, but both frequency and intensity of activity decreases with age in both sexes, with a marked reduction during teenage years, particularly in girls. Despite fears about junk food diets, most children aren't taking on more calories than they used to. They just aren't doing enough to burn off those calories. And this is the problem that our increasingly inactive society needs to address. I think society has actually created this problem for children, and a society really believes in the future health of our children. We've got to try and activate across many dimensions, family, community, school and so forth, to try and increase the activity content of our children's lives. I mean, what we're really looking for is when the current generation of children become adults, they always take the dog for a walk, whether they've got a dog or not. <laughs>